everybody, welcome to another episode of Movers and Shakers of Fall. Um, I'm super excited to have my guest with me today. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know what Movers and Shakers of Fall is, this is purely just conversation with people from Paul doing amazing things and just showcasing Paul excellence. Uh, but for the reason, just to inspire a bit in Paul uh, for the youngsters. So today I managed to get hold of Roberto Kyle. I'm sure he doesn't need any introduction, but formally let me do the introduction. So Roberto Kyle is of course an actor, he's a performer, he's a singer, and he's best known for his role as Leroy in Arn's play, that's on Cape Net and Key. Um, and I, he was one of the first people I interviewed on paper, <laughs> and then I think one of the third or fourth people uh, on video, and yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a reminisce for me now. Um, so, Roberto, thanks so much for taking your time out on your Sunday evening to chat to me. Thank you so much for having me. As a like please. Yeah, tell me how I see your 2019 is amazing. How's yeah. life? It's been going a lecker. Um, yeah, just like constantly pushing to be the best rendition of myself that I can be and, you know, clapping it room, stand for up, doing what I can do, you know, um, yeah. So how's the experience on Arends Play been so far? It's been lekker. Um, I moet myself soms nog pinch. Um, and soms slat het my dat ek in die middel van my droom vir myself bevind. Um, so it's been lekker and very grounding at times. Very um, overwhelming at times, but also very grounding at times. Um, but it's been lekker. Ek leer elke dag. Um, en ek bedoel, dit is my lekker om te kan sê dat ek bezig is met iets... Um, waar ik zoveel vreugde vind. Mm. Um, so ik geniet van mijn tijd op Arends Vlei. Yeah. So when you got the call for Arends Vlei, did you ever expect it to be such a major, how do you say, impact in your life? Well, there's, there's two ways of answering that question for me. Because one, when I got like the request for the part, to me it was just simply, as ik die part gaan aanvat, is het the best move for me to make mm. dance in my loop on. So I was thinking very like business like and very like strategy wise. Mm. I'm going to roll for my eight day, I'm going to roll for my brand that I will have dance in my life. Um, but then in the same breath, the second part is when I read the script the first time, I thought, yes, see, the role is mind boggling, it is mm. challenging, it is. Um, progressive, it mm. is inclusief en ek dink, dit is die type role wat, wat geskept tans moet word in die land in. Mm. Um, vooral omdat thema soos homoseksualiteit mm. and you know, just being yourself on themes that are as evident in the industry at the moment yeah. or were as evident mm. a couple of months ago yeah, yeah. you know, um, en toe ek het lees, dink ek, dit is definitief een rol wat ek moet Anvat, mm. omdat ik weet ik op een of andere manier die die wereld een beter plek zal, mm. you know, I'll, I'll leave the world a better place somehow by taking on this role. And yeah, so of course. That's what I thought when I when I read mm. the script the first mm. time. So how are you entering the celebrity life? Because of course you can't walk in the mall. Or you can't. <laughs> I mean, this is a different level of Roberto Carl. Um, it's it's, I don't know. It still feels like a bit too foreign mm. to me. Mm. Um, yeah, it just. Everywhere I go, I just try to remain myself. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, even though it can get like overwhelming with people's responses and stuff, mm. especially because people tend to be very um, excited. Yeah, you know. Yeah, when I love your scene and songs, we tell any whom that excitement out the beauty and then it's just a bit hectic, you know. And then so it's I just I always try to remain calm, both for myself and for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying getting to meet people. It's my lekker om 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 samen die aanhangers van Arends Vlei te communicate mm. en om vir om vir julle te ontmoet en, and, mm. you know, it's, I, I always just like take a moment to talk and for, to me it's always important to ask what their names are, what people's names are. Mm. I think people's names are important because that's how they navigate their lives. Mm. Um, mm. And that's what you want to let people that you also want to see for who and for what they are, you know. So yeah. I, I, it's important for me to ask what their names are and, and to nice. leave the conversation, um, making them feel like they are worthy of a conversation mm. and worthy of taking a picture and worthy yeah, of just of like acknowledging. So yeah, so, yeah I'm, 
I'm navigating this thing called being a celebrity. I still don't know what it means, Ma. Yeah. <laughs> so give me the first experience of being mobbed as a celebrity. Has it happened already? It has, yes. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> this story is actually by snacks. I was in the with my sister and my sister played dance with C. So when we do see each other, we try to like spend quality mm. time with each other. But mm. we went to the mall. After the mall, we went... We had to leave the mall because things like got really intense at the mall. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> so we had to leave the mall, and so we went to a checkers out in Wellington, mm. and that's where I was mobbed for the first time okay. by like the checkers staff. Okay. Um, and it was a bit overwhelming because I didn't know what to say. I said, "What did my gebeur it?" And I get to do myself to to navigate the situation. So I was just there, and my sister was also just there, yeah. having to take pictures, you know. <laughs> um, so we left the space. We left check uh, checkers, and then um, we realized we ended up not getting what we were. They took yeah. it, you know. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I probably not myself navigate the real yeah. situation from being a celeb. I okay, know. cool. So <laughs> and so, how's the, how's your mom treating Roberto as a celebrity now? Same old, same Is old. Okay. Yeah, I I would not always get sick. I'm not even getting my diet. It's like I'm double checking the light at first. I'm not even pulling drink up on the night. You know, I'm not even scoring good fast. Yeah. I'm not sick of my 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 clear is always school. So yeah, it's fine. It's just not still normal, Roberto. Um, yeah. Which is which is cool because that okay. sense of that sense of self. Is yeah. what I think keeps me afloat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like uh, last week, uh, we of course had that major scene on Ireland's Flay. Uh, what, what I don't know his character's name, Wesley. Yeah, you and the Wesley. Um, tell me about about that journey. I mean, I was mean, reflecting in your mind if you think back. Um, ik is ontzettend trots mm. op. Die story, op die storyline, op die storyline, op die story mm. van hashtag Wesley. Mm, mm. Um, ek dink, dit is ontzettend braaf van kyk net en kyk net en kiese kant om hierdie type materiaal uit te saai. Mm. Like I said, it's not something that has been explored a lot, mm. you know, uh, during the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, omdat het in het but maak jy vir my sin dat dit nog so sensitief is in 2019 nie, maar dit mm. is sensitief. Mm. And the fact that Keikner en Key and Keikner, you know, have been pushing these narratives mm. of inclusivity yeah. of, you know. Um, but it's a worldwide conversation. It is a worldwide yeah. conversation. And yeah. that's also why I, why I applaud Channel yeah. for doing what they are doing. Yeah. Um, so ek is ontzettend trots op die story van, die Wesley storyline, dat dit, dit was vir my mind-blowing om daar, en, daar op te kan begin. Mm. Um, en is my mind blowing to see what the storyline and other people make. Mm. The fact that Wesley, you know, um, the storyline uh, is busy with my face for people who are not open to other people. Lief can he, mm. you know, mm. to people who were pushed or are pushed away by like the community and by um, their families because of who they identify as. And I think that it's, it's brilliant that the storyline is cha- uh, challenging um, conventional I- ideas of what a relationship should mm. be between people. And I think the core of the storyline is that liefde, liefde is and that liefde constant sal wen. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter what what people's beliefs mm. are. You mm. can't you can't stop people from being together yeah, and from, totally. from sharing their love with each other. Yeah. And I think that's why the storyline is so important as well as so epic. As, you know? Yeah, yeah. So- so uh, the scene happened. How was? How did you get the response the next day? I mean, of course, the inboxes and the DMs. I mean, because I saw on social media there was like this euphoria yeah, of yeah, yeah, liberation yeah. or something. <laughs> um, what was? How was the response? It was absolutely mind-boggling. Mm. It was. I didn't expect it to be such a big deal for people. Mm. I knew that the storyline would move people. My mm. get to perceive that the storyline. That the, the actual soon so a big mm-hmm. impact I'll hear of of like the Kikers, yeah, especially like the millennials. Yeah, you know? yeah of course, yeah. Um, I think what the algeal was it to say? It was as though someone was exhaling um, mm-hmm. for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it was like our audience audience members were like locked up and they were just like going through their lives. Mm-hmm. Tense, bottled, bottled you know, up, bottled yeah. up and yeah. tense, and then yeah. this kiss happened, and they like 
let out mm. this like sigh of relief yeah. you know and to to be able to experience that with like an audience you know that the day that on my spirit to do it that it for me perceived that I precise to what I for understand is to do in life and you know I'm I'm profoundly happy mm. and proud of the work mm. yeah. yeah and I mean like you're saying kick net um that's progressiveness I saw they also have the bursuk oh as well yeah, coming yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah. as well so I mean this probably the string going forward to be um like you say more progressive yeah. about um these topics um so tell me what's what's up in the future of course you can't tell me what's happening in Aaron's face in the future what's happening in Roberto Carlos life for the future well like i said the last time um constantly striving mm. for new work mm. better work mm. progressive work mm. um there got for me a day op alle dag se base yeah um there is a play that i'm currently nice about to be going into um okay. i can't quite yeah, yeah. mention what it is yet but i will post about it on my social media so check my eight da mm-hmm. so it got a lekker play with met groot name in the industry and then yeah. i can't wait om om meer daar oor te praat he. okay mm. cool so it's not often i can play 30 seconds with a celebrity lol <laughs> um so we're gonna play 30 seconds quickly so this is the kiddies one okay all right so i'm sure uh, my last my last My last game I had I didn't do so well but I'm very competitive like I like to keep the bar up yeah Okay me too I'm extremely competitive So you go first you pick a card Yeah we've got the timer here Yeah So uh, you explain to me and try and explain like a kid so that I could understand it easily uh, Okay all right Okay are you ready There we go Um Snay and Ingels Cut Nikoki Fanta. Uh, um, Ray and Engels. No, you can't. Just okay. Oh, oh, when oh. you are reversing, but you get on the can drive. Yes. Um, not failed. Success. Uh, another one. Win. N- another one. You, f- you, you, if you didn't fail your exam, you pass. Yes. Um, it's a car. I'm back. Uh, Beetle. Yes. Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. Done. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. Lekker. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. I've got competition. You do. Um, so we we living we living in Cape Town. We living in Cape Town. Right. Coming to Paul visit mom every now and again. Coming to Paul visit mom every now and again. Okay. But I am I'm staying in Cape Town. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. Let's. Uh, For now, at least. Oh, we we moving to Sea Point. Uh, right? Yeah. Well, well, let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Um, One, two, two three, three, go. Uh, five days equals. I mean, seven days equals a week. There we go. Up, uh, salt and pepper. Right. The thing that comes out of a volcano is lava. The postman puts what in your post box? Uh, mail. There we go. And the glitz and the glam of actors when they get a, a trophy, award, Oscars. There we go. See. I mean, what was that like? Six seconds. Oh wow. Bam. Okay. Uh, you win that round. Okay. Now I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll put for the names now. up top for here. Now. For now. Um right so you of course previously were last year I mean if you look at your past what 12 months I mean you were with Mark Lottering on Anti Mole show then you had the other show as well with the levels what was that one significant other significant other then you've played Skulk as well and then Aaron's play I mean what what's the secret why is all why the stars aligned for Roberto Ka die are se genade okay ah. okay cool good answer yeah I have no comeback for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got 10 questions, quick questions for you. Sure, go for it. Let's uh see dinner with three people dead or alive. Um Kirosh and Naidu, best friend of mine, he's alive. All right. Um my father who passed in 2013 to cancer. Okay. Um, oh, wait, 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 for cancer. To cancer, yes. Okay, so explain to me. So in your so we just pause this thing. Yeah, yeah. So your role and you had cancer yeah i mean how does explain to me that like your father had cancer you had cancer so you also had to play the role um you were of course alive when your father had cancer so you could relate explain about that journey um yeah like i mean uh, for in the past five years i've lost my father my grandfather his father my grandmother his mother and my uncle um to cancer wow um so i could definitely put myself in someone's shoes who has experienced the effects mm. of either the disease or either having lost someone to the disease mm. um 
And so having to put myself into like that space has been quite, quite um, challenging, mm. <laughs> but also at the, at the same time, quite healing. Mm. Um, someone had asked me the other day, how did you feel? Because for, for two months, I, I completely cut myself off from the world. And I, I get near and for two months, I was not in the flat, two months, I get my hair every day gesnee um, because it was a part of like just my process to, mm. to, to feel the sense of having to, to lose yourself because that's what the disease uh, that's what the disease like does to mm. the body it, it, it makes you become lesser of mm. yourself mm. because mm. It, your body deteriorates yeah, of course. you know and um, so to me I felt like having to cut my hair literally shave my hair every morning was me um, trying to at least get close to what it is to be um, consumed by this disease. Um, so this, that, that's why it, it was important for me. I also tried losing a bit of weight. Um, wow. yes, see, ik, ik like van course, man, and that yeah. was a bit difficult, you know. <laughs> so I was just like, you know what, I'll cut my hair off every morning. Um, at least shave the motion of shaving my hair put me in a headspace of okay I can do this I can take on this part and I can to me it was important to be able to do the the, the storyline you know in a way that brings um, dignity to those who mm. have lost people to this disease mm. and dignity to those who have fallen victim to um, the disease and for me it, 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 it puts me off when people try or write or act in a way that aren't approached with sincerity mm. Mm. Uh, you know, mm. and it's for me important to always to know that there's a sensitivity when it comes to people in their lives. And we have to always take care of it. And so for me, having to cut myself off for two months from the wall and having wow. to shave my hair, you know, every morning getting on to set, that was me trying to hold on to the truth mm. of, of Leroy's yeah. process. Okay. Yeah. You say so you lost your father with cancer and you playing this this role uh, you could really see you immersed yourself into this role um going home in the evening was there any like you th you're thinking to yourself this is what it is probably like to live with cancer um, definitely mm. um I, I i definitely felt like i was in the heart of this big crisis mm. you know mm. this crisis of deterioration and loss and emptiness and um, I feel like having gone through the storyline and having shot on it for so long toward the end of it, I felt like, because a friend of mine just to, uh, connected with the previous answer that I had you given, a friend of mine had asked, how are you coping? Mm. How are you feeling now that you have shot the, the storyline? Mm. And I said to him, do you know what, it actually, I feel somewhat lighter than I had before and years before. It feels like the Roberto that has... Because when, when I found out my dad had passed in 2013 on the 1st of August, a, a part of me died. A part of me went, mm. you know, mm. missing. Yeah, of course. And for the first time, I felt like that a bit of that Roberto that had gone missing had come back. Wow. You okay. know, and, yeah. And, and, and yeah, I definitely do feel yeah. like there's some, some sort of um, healing attached mm. to, to what I had done and my choices. Okay, cool. Yeah. Dream job? I'm doing my dream job. Lovely. Last movie you cried in? Cried in or cried for? Oh, sorry, of course, you were actor. Cried. <laughs> <laughs> cried for. Last movie I cried for. Um, You're Not You, Hilary Swank. Okay, cool. yeah. I don't know it. Um, it's really good. See it. Uh, pinch myself moment before professional acting and now while acting. I think the, one of my first pinch myself moments before I started my professional life definitely has to be when I was elected as deputy head boy in primary school. Wow. Okay. Uh, and I was at William Lloyd Primary School and was elected as uh, the deputy head boy. But I, the pinch myself moment wasn't necessarily being elected, but mm. it was having my mom being called out from the audience and having to come up on stage and like put on my badge. Mm. I think that moment was so profound to me and it changed how I thought about my future and wow, where I was going to no. head, you know, and to me, it was always important to make my mother and my father proud. And so that moment when she had to come onto stage and latch my bad, my, put my badge on, I was just like, yeah, this is amazing. I, I, I somehow achieved something very special in yeah, life, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was my first pinch myself moment. Um, I think one of my first professional pinch myself moments um, had to be 
being directed by Oscar-winning director Gavin Hood okay. from the movie Totti. Mm. Um, and he was uh, he was my first professional director ever. Um, mm. The first film I ever did was Iron the Sky, and having being able to to like shoot with him and yeah. shoot with people like uh, Helen Mirren and um, Barkat Abdi and the late Alan Rickman was mm. was just mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, if I had to give you ten thousand rand now, what would you spend it on? I'd give it to charity. Okay, nice. Good answer. Series that you're binge watching and which series would you like to play a cameo role in? Ooh. Mm. I'm currently binge watching a show called um, You're Dead to Me. You're, a, you, you're, you Are Dead to Me. Okay. It's a new series on Netflix. Check it out. Okay. It's really good. Um, a show I'd like to have a cameo in. Um, hmm. Wow. There's so many, but I do think I would go with, do you remember a show called Charmed? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's like, what wasn't it an essay? Not SABC to ch- TV2 or something. <laughs> but Charmed, it was oh, Charmed, young. Yes. <laughs> I was Permi Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just the witches. You yeah. know, yeah. Okay, cool. So I yeah. would love to go back and just like <laughs> maybe be the witch's brother. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the best part of being a professional actor and the worst part of being a professional actor. The best part of being a professional actor for me is as a professional is than as in a game for your ear, but also a greater game. But Ver van jou om elke dag jou beste te doen, elke dag op te staan, elke dag hard te werk, because everyone else is doing it, and you must work on what sets you apart mm. in this game from other people. Great. Yeah. So that's the best part of yeah. being in this, uh, being a professional actor. Okay. You're always on your toes. Yeah. You know, yeah. but the the, the 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 race is always toward becoming a better mm. performer mm. all the time, or at mm. least for me. So mm. I, that's what I enjoy about it. Yeah. Uh, the mo- the mo- one of the most difficult parts of being in this industry is definitely when the anxiety and the insecurity starts creeping in because you aren't necessarily where you are wanting to be. Because net om dat jylle vir my sien op die TV betek nie dat ek hier moes baie hard gewek het om te kom te waak is vir dag hier. So it, 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 you know, it encapsulates nights of crying. It encapsulates nights of worrying. Hoe gaat ek my, 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 rent betaal? Hoe gaat ek eat, you know? So, that's that's the anxiety part that creeps up on you is 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 quite scary. Yeah. Was there ever time where you thought I don't want to do this anymore? Oh, definitely. Is it? But then I wake up and I'm like, oh, I want to be a star. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to I want to change people's lives through storytelling. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Right. Um, but this is the thing about coming from communities that are marginalized. Mm. For example, coming from a community of color, but also coming from a community, a homosexual community, yeah. is you are forced to work hard. Mm. No, of course. Yeah. You know, mm. um, there is no other alternative. You have to make it. You have to succeed. Mm. Mm. Your success doesn't necessarily have to be big. Success can also mean going from one place to the other. Just just taking a step from point A to point B, as long as you're moving forward. You know, my mother said, "Moet niet stagneren. Mm. Moet moet niet stagneren." Yeah. You know, and yeah. having grown up now, the gravity of that hit like hits me every morning. Mm. I can't become stagnant, stagnant in what I yeah. in what I want to yeah. do in life. And I mean, like, it's like I always see acting and theatre and even music. It's like a really cutthroat business. You always have to be ahead of the pack yeah. because there's so many um, annoying habits about yourself. Like caring, you caring about what other people think. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Your inspiration? Who's your inspiration? My mother. Okay. And my sister. Um, advice to your twin year old self. And Adele. Oh yeah, we saw this. Adele. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Saw, Sorry. we saw Sorry. Adele. Where is she, by the way? She's quiet. She's working. Okay. She's busy with albums? I can't say. Is it? When last did you chat? Gister aan. Is it? Advice to <laughs> Sorry. Advice to your twin year old self. Everything's going to be okay. Okay. Nice. Everything's going to be okay. I right. wish I can go back to my 20-year-old self and just like hug mm. that 20-year-old Roberto and say, Kiki, relax, man. Yeah. 
I'll ask some yotes is pa take pa full most no man relax strato right this. Um one of okay but you probably know all Adele songs. This is a song the question is a song that you know all the lyrics. But I mean Adele you probably know. Yeah. Um Never alone will I find someone like you, right? Yeah. Am I right? Okay, I'm not going to ask you the question. Um, if Roberto Carl leaves us one day, what does he want to be remembered as? Hmm. Someone who brought happiness. Hmm. Just, done. you know, done. Someone who brought happiness. Hmm. I, and this is why, why, why I said earlier, this is my belangrijke mens, it's a name to for myself, my, when you pat and stop, or you, you know, they want to take a picture, whatever. It's my not belangrijk om people just to acknowledge people for who they are and yeah. what they are and what they believe. And, you know, we might not necessarily believe in each other's beliefs, but the cost for your nuts om gaaf te wist in ander mense nie. So true. People are so prone to always listen with the intention of responding, and that means nothing. It means mm. nothing. Mm. There's nothing kind about wanting to always just ha ah, ah, ha ah, yeah, ha you know? yeah. And sometimes people just want someone to be there and to listen. Mm. This mm. is why it's important for me to ask people's names because to me it's important for them. For me, it is important that they know that I'm listening to mm. them and, and mm. that I acknowledge them for who and for what they are. So, in dag as ek hier my eersie sal het vir my lekker wees om te weet ek het vir mense gelukkig gemaak of I brought them happiness yeah. even if it's just totally. in a spur of the moment. Yeah, totally. Um, and lastly, so you've got a few aspiring, budding actors, 20, 19 year olds, and they want to know, Roberto, what's, what's the secret? Why? How, how can we become successful in what we want to do? What's your advice to them? Whether it is acting or this thing at life in general, you know, we are, there's, there's certain stuff put in place for us, like going to school and bettering ourselves through a system. And that's how life works, yeah. you know, and people who nail the system are the ones who would like to think that they come out on in top. Mm. And sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. To me, the secret to success is having a heart. Mm. Don't ever forget the sense of yourself because our hearts define who we are. So and don't it. Yeah. Don't forget that you're having a sense of yourself. Mm. You know, you can be the best actor. You can be the best vocalist, you can be the best accountant, but it means nothing if you make people unhappy yeah. or if you are unhappy, mm. you know. Mm. So whatever it is that you are doing, do it with heart. Do it with heart. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, Roberto, uh, dude, good luck with, I don't know if there's a season two of Iron's Fly. I've seen Thank on you. the social medias they were... Um, chatting about the season two but there's no confirmation but if there is good luck i'm sure it's going to be really really interesting thank you um and i don't luck. know if there's a season two yeah, yeah. i don't know and uh good luck with your play i'm probably going to be at graham's festival yes, of yes. course yeah right yes. nice thank you and yeah good luck with the future studio i mean the past year has been on a trajectory i'm sure it it's going to be on a constant now i'm sure you don't go for auditions you get directors phoning you now hey I still go for dishes. Okay, cool. I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but thanks so much for uh, chatting to me. And I mean, just keep Thank you doing what you're me. doing. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It's, it's always like coming to sit here and having a chat and touching base. And, yeah. you know, yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. Roberto Carl. Leroy. <laughs>